Hi, I'm Alex Howe. I'm here with Tanya Page from the nutrition team at the clinic. And today we're going to be talking about the role of candida in ME, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, that group of illnesses. Uh, I seem to start all these videos by saying something that for me was personally interesting, but it is. Um, especially because um, in my own journey of being ill, I did multiple anti-candida programs with all kinds of horribly unpleasant side effects and that kind of thing. So I think it's a really important area, and I think that for a lot of people we treat at the clinic, they're often already on anti-candida diets, or they've done a lot of stuff in the past, and I think there's a lot of confusion about this area. Well, we're going to try and dispel some of the myths around that in, in this, this, this short video. But maybe just a good starting point for those that aren't aware of what candida actually is and what some of the symptoms are of it. Okay. Well, candida is a, is a species of yeast. Um, so the one we, we all get worried about is candida albicans. That's, that's the one that causes the typical candida type symptoms. Um, but um, candida itself is just a, a name for a yeast. Um, there are a number of different species, um, and, and really it's not a problem uh, until candida actually proliferates and gets larger in numbers. Um, because we, we all have, you and I will have candida in our bodies, um, and, and it's not a problem uh, if there's a fair amount of good bacteria and all the things that should be in our bodies to, to dampen that down. So it's only when it starts to proliferate that you have a problem. And when it starts to proliferate, what are some of the symptoms that people would experience? Um, it will make it easier if I explain a bit more about how it proliferates yeah, yeah. Um, and then it will explain the, the types of symptoms that you get. So when candida starts um, getting overpopulated, um, it tends to mutate into a fungal form, so it's no longer a yeast, it's more of a fungus, so it kind of has these finger-like projections. It's, a little more nasty rather than a little bobbly little yeast. So almost like something out of alien. <laughs> indeed, indeed, it starts. It's like um, like mold would grow across um, bread. Okay. You know, it kind of does that. Um, and these little finger-like projections can actually poke through the gut wall. Um, and as you can imagine, that's that's not supposed to happen. Um, the, the gut can be inflamed, so you can get pain. Um, but the big problem is when you've got holes in the gut, what they call leaky gut, um, or, or um, lack of gut integrity. Uh, what you can get is sort of partly digested protein going across into the bloodstream. Uh, that shouldn't happen, so you get, um, you, you get the, the protein part um, actually um, setting the immune system off, mm. and so it gives symptoms like food intolerances, food allergy type symptoms. Um, and the problem with that is that a, a huge immune um, response is, uh, is set off, and that makes you very tired. Yeah. So it's kind of a combination of... Um, of these sort of food intolerance type symptoms, tiredness, um, a lot of um, the, these peptides, these partly digested proteins that go across, um, they, they can form sort of like an endorphin type reaction, um, which sets off a load of head, head symptoms. So um, with candida, you often get brain fog, mm. mood changes, irritability, all that kind of thing. Depression is, is quite a key one as well. So it's a, it's a whole, um, with candida. Yeah, and I know that also that I mean these symptoms are basically for a lot of people, they are the ME chronic fatigue symptoms. I know yeah. that back in the back I guess it was the mid to late nineties there was there was almost this idea that the ME was candida. That, mm. it, that, it, that it kind of it was one of the first things that people really cottoned on to that was a factor. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the early books around it haven't really been updated. Mm. Um, and you know, and uh, Jill Jacobs, who wrote one of the really famous books on candida, who's a, a, sort of a trusted actually of our charity, she now refers all of her candida people to us because she recognises we've got the development in the knowledge in the last decade or so since then. Mm. Um, but so that being the case of some of the symptoms, Obviously, I think the, the, the confusion is for people, because the symptoms are so close to any symptoms anyway, that I think quite a lot of people end up doing anti candida diets and doing the, the, the antifungals and that kind of thing. They may not even have candida in the first place. Indeed. Well, yeah, when I was training, um, we had a lecture on candida, and we all talked ourselves into having candida. We all <laughs> thought we had candida, and that was 80 people relatively healthy people. So candida symptoms are very diverse um, and you can look at candida questionnaires and things like this but you can essentially you know um, talk yourself into having candida. Um, 
and a lot of our patients think they have candida and it's understandable because of their symptoms but really um, I never like to treat candida in any shape or form unless um, I've got a test result in front of me that says yep yeah, there's candida there otherwise it can be sort of masked under so many other things that you know yeah it could be barking up the wrong tree basically yeah and obviously we hear talk about the, the complexity of, of ME and that group of illnesses mm. in of themselves that there can be many different things causing people's symptoms. Yes. But if somebody, maybe it's just worth very briefly mentioning how we would, you would test for candidates, people are aware of that. Yeah, you, you, you can test. I mean, that, that there, are, there are blood tests for candida, there are saliva tests for, for candida as well. Um, we do it actually, the way I prefer to, to look at it is part of the stool testing um, because that shows candida in the, in the, in the stool. Um, so that's my preferred method okay. for detecting it. Okay. And then if somebody has got candida, what kind of things can we do about it? I know this is a hugely complex area that we could talk for a day about on the video vlog, but maybe just a couple of the, of the key ingredients, I guess, that are treating it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it comes down to the fundamentals of why did that person get the candida in the first place? And it's not just because it happened to walk along. Um, it was in your body to start with, it proliferated, so we have to make sure that we counteract um, those things. So, you know, was the, the immunity poor? Uh, was the person very stressed? Um, were they taking steroids, other drugs that would have reduced their immunity? By antibiotics um, or the pill and that kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. so there's a number of factors that, that cause it. So you have to obviously make sure that all of those are sorted out, because what's the point of killing off candida? when it's just going to come back again and proliferate again. So you have to take all those things out. You have to make sure that the inherent immunity is strong enough to prevent more proliferation. Um, and then depending on, on the person, obviously look at diet, look at blood sugar balance, because um, uh, sugar cravings are such a, a, a big, big part of uh, Canada. So obviously we don't want to exacerbate that, so make sure we're balancing blood sugar, a good diet to, to, to make sure that happens. Um, and then um, use some anti-candida type treatments if we if we need to. It kind of depends on the strength of the person, but um, we build up their integral strength first, um, and then use antifungals if we need to. Mm. And we actually use some sort of enzymes that uh, help to break down the candida rather than just blatantly kill it off. And of course, you've kind of got to make sure that the person's got the physical uh, strength to detoxify all mm. of the waste products from the candida as you kill it off basically. So make sure you're building up the liver and that kind of thing if you need to as well. Yeah. 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 Because I mean I'm probably what people are getting from watching this is is that this is a complex area. Yes. You know, and then there's, there's been I think a big development in in clinical understanding around this in the last certainly the last three to five years, especially in the last ten years. Um, so people that are watching this and thinking so you know where do they go with it? I guess what you're saying is that it's really helpful to have a professional that has a clinical experience understand the the differences of individual cases yes. around this. No, absolutely. And, and I mean, Canada generally doesn't come along by itself. There's, there's normally other things involved. So um, it's not a good idea to really be reductionistic about this and just, you know, treat one thing at a time. It, it's, you've got to treat the whole thing. Yeah. So chances are we won't just be looking at Canada anyway. So it's nice to have a guiding hand in these sorts of situations, I feel. Yeah. No, great. Well, thank you for your time, Tanya. Hope that's been helpful for people watching it. Um, Often it's patients watching these, so you, you know it's, it's helpful just to understand more about what's happening. Um, and if you're not a patient and you want to find out more, then our information pack, free 15-minute chat, great starting points. So I hope this has been helpful, and thank you for watching.